There are so many lakes in British Columbia, more than 380,000 in fact, but when it comes down to who is keeping track of them and checking if they're still healthy, it falls more often than not to volunteers, even in one of the province's biggest tourist destinations. We're here next to Alt Lake in Whistler to talk to one person who knows a lot about how British Columbia is trying to preserve our lake habitats. Hi, Lynn. Hi there, Justin, how are you doing? Pretty good. This is Alta Lake. Well, I have just retired recently from 32 years with the province of BC in water management. 32 years ago it was more about water quantity. It was about flood and drought. Water quality has always kind of been in, in the backlight and it's certainly a, becoming increasingly a big issue, especially with climate change. And our focus here with Whistler Lakes Conservation Association is all about water quality and, and what happens in the lake, but also what happens on the land because that affects what happens in the lakes. There's something like 100 plus million lakes on, on the planet, making up a huge percent, 80 plus percent of the freshwater supply. So lakes are an important part of the hydrosphere and they're important in watersheds within, at a local level within the watersheds in which they lie. So I've got a very scientific question for you. Is this the best lake in BC? You know, I love Alta Lake. I've been here, coming here since 1982, but my favorite lake is Chilco Lake. So Chilco's my number one, Alta's my number two. All right, we're gonna go down there to your to number two lake and uh, monitor it a little bit, right? Okay, you betcha, let's go. All right, let's go. We're going to show you what we do as citizen scientists on Whistler Lakes, the monitoring that we do and why we do it. Come on and meet Tom and Peggy English. Tom, Tom and Peggy both sit on the Whistler Lakes Conservation Association board, as do I, and they are volunteer monitors. And so why is it so important for volunteers to be part of it? Why isn't it something that the government could or should be doing? It's a good question. You know, government can't do it all alone, nor can other big organizations. There's so many lakes in the province, and there's only so much money and so many staff. So increasingly, we're seeing the rise of citizen science, you know, really globally, right down to the local level. So I think I'm at the bottom now. How many times a month are you monitoring an individual lake? Usually once every two weeks. Tom and I thought it was so much fun and enjoyed it. We did it every week. We did it every week. <laughs> This is a, a digital sampling unit, and it's called a Pro Solo. This enables us to measure dissolved oxygen, which is a really important indicator and window into lake health. Everything needs oxygen to live, and with the mixing of lakes and, and the importance of mixing up that oxygen and nutrients, it's a key indicator. I'm get you to hold the unit, and I'm going to go do this. I'm a scientist now. I'm going to drop it down till the probe is fully immersed. Now press enter. We've got dissolved oxygen of 93.0%. Is that good? That's good. There's, there's What does that mean? Well, it means that so it means that there is oxygen in the lake for all the living things that live in the lake. But at deeper, colder levels, there's less oxygen. And so it's important if there's life living at the bottom of a lake, that's why that spring overturn, the mixing of the layers after a long cold winter is important to, to feed the lake. You know, when I look at the history of Whistler Lakes and the valley and the early pioneers and before that, we understand the ancestors of the Squamish and Lilwat nations lived and hunted and traded in these waters. And they lived by a principle that's referred to in modern day as seventh generation principle. It's really easy for me to reflect forward to my great-great-grandchildren and I hope they can experience the lakes like we are here today. What worries you as someone that looks at this, that studies this, that has cared about lakes for decades, when you look into the future that gives you pause? We know government budgets are prioritized and reallocated and moved and there just isn't the funding or the resources to do it all. It's not easy to nurture a, a stewardship ethic in a resort municipality, a world destination resort like Whistler. It takes time, it takes resources, it takes people, it takes partners, and that momentum has to continually be fed and nurtured. It's such a broad and global issue, but it doesn't sound like you despair. 
I'm always half glass full. <laughs> you gotta keep putting your best foot forward and try to make a difference. Because if we all do that, then uh, the world's a better place.